I usually have a panic attack about once every two weeks. So I had one on December 1st when I started this project and I had one today. So I shouldn't be surprised, it's about right on schedule. And I also know from experience, many years of experience, that too much socializing in one day is a trigger for, for my panic attacks. And yesterday, I definitely overdid it. If this happened a couple of months ago, I probably would have just done what I usually do, which is give up. Instead of giving up on everything, I went for a walk. I went to my favorite coffee shop. I decided to tackle my math anxiety a bit. And a strange and interesting thing happened. I felt so much better. Like by confronting one anxiety, my math anxiety, I completely forgot about all my other anxieties and they sort of canceled each other out. Is that not the most pleasant surprise ever? The most wonderful realization that I could fix one anxiety with another anxiety, like fighting fire with fire, like the expression goes, you know, two wrongs don't make a right, but three rights make a left, and a negative times a negative is a positive. Part of the reason I was thinking about this was because I started reading this book, Negative Math, How Mathematical Rules Can Be Positively Bent. I love this quote on page eight. The historical excursions in this book are meant to convey a sense of the ambiguities inherent in ordinary mathematical rules, ambiguities that have been made invisible by generations of textbook writers. And I love this idea of exploring ambiguities that are often glossed over and in thinking about parallels to my own personal life at the moment, I see it as a reminder to explore the ambiguities in my own life. The very things that make me anxious can also be great opportunities. There was that great talk by Jad Abinrod from Radiolab where he talks about gut churn and he quotes the psychologist Milton Erickson at the end of his speech. You can take the worst feeling in the world and reframe it so that the terrible feeling becomes its own solution. That idea of, of, of cognitive reframing, turning negatives into positives, I see a I see a beautiful parallel between that and what I'm hoping to learn about math. This paragraph on page six is the best paragraph I have read all month so far, I think. So I'm just gonna read the whole thing. We will concentrate attention on negative numbers. Why? Because they are unassuming but fun. Simple paradoxical gems of the practical imagination, the long neglected negatives, stand as just about the only kind of numbers about which a book has not been written, and they suit the study of creative mathematics well because they lie precisely between the obviously meaningful and the physically meaningless. Thus, we think about negative temperatures, but not about negative width. By first studying interpretive disputes in the history of signed numbers, we will place ourselves on that borderline between meaningful and meaningless, and we will gradually pry open the dusty old crate of innovative mathematical representation. One of my favorite ideas of changing the rules in math comes from geometry, right? We had Euclidean geometry, and for hundreds and hundreds of years after, after that, people just assumed that Euclidean geometry describes physical reality. These are the rules, that's all there is to it. It wasn't until the 19th century that people started to create new kinds of geometry. And then fast forward to Einstein in the early 20th century and his theory of general re relativity. And then thanks to science confirmed that our reality is not Euclidean. It's close to it, depending on gra gravity and stuff, whatever. That's physics, it's a topic for another day. My point is though, I just, I love that story of you make an assumption and it could hold for hundreds, thousands of years, and then disproven just like that, clear as day, that it cannot be true. No matter how long you assume something is true, it doesn't make it true. In my everyday life, in my struggles with anxiety, so much of it is about personal assumptions. And that goes for this whole math thing too, right? Your, your, your concept of yourself is one of those most basic assumptions that we forget to question sometimes, and I, I go my entire life thinking, I'm not a math person, you know, and, and why? The assumption wasn't really based on any part of reality, but there it was for all these years. So I love, I love, I love, I can't wait to read this book. I love, that is probably my favorite thing about math is the creative side of it. The side that you don't get to see in school. That is such a beautiful idea 
to change the rules, change the assumptions, create your own rules and follow them through and see where they take you. I hope I keep finding more reminders like this, especially they're, they're so wonderful, especially when you don't expect the reminder to be there and it surprises you and it comes from an unlikely place like a math book and it reminds you, it reminds you that you can you can change the way that you see the world and that everything that's been stressing you out is a figment of your imagination. Just like a lot of math. I just hope I don't forget that. I hope that tomorrow morning I wake up remembering that. Oh, I need to get to bed soon, but just I just had to get that off my chest, I guess. I don't know where I'm going with this. I just had to blurt that out. So have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow.